All right, David, this is about uh, as amazing of a look inside a company um, that we've ever gotten from any publicly disclosed document, but it doesn't feel right to do like a whole episode. So um, for anyone watching this, uh, we decided rather than a big episode, let's just do a, a couple minute conversation on us reflecting on this unbelievable 55 minute I guess, SMS conversation between Benchmarks, Matt Kohler, and Kevin Sinstrom, the CEO of Instagram, like right before it was bought, right? Yeah. I was, I was thinking about that. I think this was probably a Gchat conversation. I was like, is this text? Like, why would Kevin put his text in his email? I think it's probably... Oh, that must be what it is. Google and it's kind servers. of formatted like that too. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Okay. So what's the first thing that hits you about this? Oh, man. It's crazy how, so like they're talking about, you know, uh, Zuckerberg has reached out to Matt Kohler, who of course was what employee number five at Facebook and is now GP at Benchmark. Instagram was his first investment. Uh, Zuck has reached out to Kohler to say, Hey, I'm thinking about buying Instagram. What do you think? Um, and, uh, it just strikes me. I was so struck by how scared they are of Facebook. Like they are both of them absolutely terrified of Facebook. On the one hand, you might say, as they should be. On the other hand, this is April 2012. Facebook is a private company. They're not public. They have completely missed the boat on mobile. They're about to have an existential crisis. Zuckerberg, of course, knows all this, but it's just amazing that like that Sistrom and, and Matt, even Matt haven't worked there. Like They're just too close to it. They can't see the broader context here. Well, that, that, that Facebook is screwed without Instagram. Exactly, exactly. They think they're yeah. screwed without Facebook, but actually it's the other way around. Yeah. I got a blast from the past too, reading through, uh, particularly when they're referring to Instagram's differentiated structure, the fact that they have a follower graph instead of a bi-directional friend graph, but then also how obsessed they are with the namespace, like the three times they've brought up the namespace, the idea that like on Instagram, you just have a handle rather than a first name, last name. Facebook's obsessed with the real name thing yep. and, and how like that's a negotiating position that like, whoa, whoa, whoa our structure and namespace is unique and wouldn't fit well with Facebook. Like that's so neither here nor there and how they ended yeah. up integrating the product. It's so amazing. Like all these things that they're thinking about and caring about. And like, here we are in 2020 looking at this and we're like, Facebook's mobile applications were HTML5 shells at this point in time. Like, yeah, no kidding. Guys, guys zoom out. Totally. I also thought it was crazy how they referred to uh, this PR project as like a strategic weapon. Like, let's yeah. let's go. I'll put our PR person on saying how much we love being a part of the Facebook ecosystem and pumping content into Facebook. I mean, it's like a um, it's it just makes you think now every time now anybody who's been in this industry for a while knows every time you see a piece, um, you should sort of think like, huh, who's benefiting from this? It's the old, uh, it's the old um, Charlie Munger quote, right? Like, uh, show me the incentives and I'll show you the behavior. <laughs> totally. Totally. What else um, jumped out at you? Uh, oh my God. There's so many like amazing little details in here. Like, okay. So how did the government decide which people and firm names to black out and which not to? Because most people are blacked yeah. out, but DST is in there. Kleiner is in there. Benchmark by name. Benchmark by name. Jack Dorsey, of course, in Twitter. But like, uh, I'm for, pretty for the, sure for the people is in there and blacked out. Yeah. And the people who are referred to as like a good guy or a good dude yeah. who are blacked out about potentially coming in on the next round. Yeah. One of those is definitely Dave Morin. Uh, I couldn't think they about, talk who, about path. Yeah, they talk about path. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fascinating. I, I also like that they considered um, raising 70 million, like this big, unbelievable, unassailable asset that like, well, if we raise 70 million, then we'll have enough to build an army. An like, army. Yeah. How, my, how times change since 2011. Yeah. Just crazy, like yeah. But this whole thing, like, is just such a reminder to me, and like a, a such a time capsule of like you. Even these people who are like obviously amazingly talented, just on their own right, but have all should have all of the context of this, like all of the context. Don't have the mm. really important context, which is that Instagram is going to be a, you know, I don't know. Had Facebook not bought Instagram, Instagram today is a what 
three hundred billion dollar company. I, yeah, I can't remember what we found. Like, I can't. The, yeah. I can't say. I don't know the numbers, but like at least a hundred x the billion dollars that Facebook paid for it. Yeah, remarkable. I also think uh, this is just a really interesting illustration of like the wordsmithing that goes on in a simple response to kick off a negotiation. Like yeah. four or five times, they amend how Matt should respond in his message one, to Zuck. One line text to Zuck. <laughs> just crazy, Amazing. crazy. That the big issue at hand here, though, and I think this is a good good thing to wrap on, because um, we could really everyone, if you listen to the show or like what we do, and sort of telling the stories of great companies and kind of unearthing internet history, this is one of the most interesting, significant documents, um, probably since like the YouTube investment memo from Sequoia from yeah. from Rudolf Botha. Um, that was in the Viacom lawsuit, right? That that came out. Yep, yep. the 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 final thing I, I'll kind of say on this is. I think it's a little silly that this was made public as a part of the antitrust hearings. I don't think you glean jack about whether Facebook has performed any sort of antitrust by buying Instagram from this text transcript. All you get to know is Kevin and Matt and their relationship and how they strategically thought about positioning before the um, infamous weekend where Kevin and Mark hammered it out in Mark's backyard. Yeah. And it's also just fun, like, you know, this is one of those things that like the more things change, the more they say the same. How many text message threads have you been on like this with an entrepreneur? <laughs> How so should many. I respond? <laughs> yeah. I've been on the other side of that too. Like and knowing that side. someone's wordsmithing something that I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So great. Awesome. Yeah. All right, everyone. Um, it, it, check it out. We'll link to it. Um, if, uh, if you haven't already read it, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy piece of internet history. Talk to you.